everybody. It's your man, Rusty Blade. Yo, yo, we back. Uh, we back again. Dolls Lotto, Chaz up. up. Classic in the building. Classic building. is in the building today. Chaz up. Chaz up. We got a special guest with us, man. Yes, sir. We got the man, Steven Winston, yeah. a.k.a. Vote Emphasis. We got us so. an MMA fighter, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yo, what's going on, Chicago? What's good? <laughs> man, let's get into born it. Born and raised here. Yes, sir. <laughs> you born and raised in Chicago. What part of Chicago you from? I'm from Inglewood, man. Born and raised. Nice. Inglewood definitely make exceptional athletes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So, bro, man, you've been grinding hard. I just seen you at the HFC 27 fight. We got the interview with you there, and then you just recently did a photo shoot for the Urban Grind Lifestyle magazine. Tell us about that. Yo, uh, the photo shoot was pretty dope, man. He just basically came through, you know, and got me, uh, you know, training, you know, and just seeing what we did conditioning-wise, you know, me hitting the bag, and, you know, I just putting in work. Mm -hmm. right, a fighter in the city of Chicago, First, I'm going to ask you once again, how did you get started in the MMA world? Yo, basically, man, um, I've always been an athlete coming up, you know, playing baseball, basketball, and all above. So, you know, I wrestled through high school, too, and I've always been an MMA fan, you know, strike force, uh, watching UFC and everything. So, you know, once I got through with high school, wrestling and everything, got tired of saying, like, oh, I, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. And I said, man, let me stop saying it and do it. So I found the right connects and uh, hooked up with Sensei Winston at Bushido and started training for it. Nice. Okay. Now, how did your very first MMA fight go? That was my question, dang. <laughs> Yo, my very first fight was, uh, actually my very first fight was against a judo guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I was I was turned up. I got too excited, you know. And my sensei wanted me to work my striking and stay away from. Him. But soon the bell rang. I went out. I hit him with a couple of punches, couple of kicks. Hit him with overhand right and rocked him, and he fell back into the gate. And I got a little little too excited and rushed him. After that, he fell back to the gate, and he was able to hook me up and hit me with a toss and. He kind of, he kind of arm, you know. He got me in an arm bar, so you know. Mm. Like I said, it's not too many people, and you know, that, that's willing to sit, stand, and strike with me. You know, that's true. Okay. So with that said, would you rather box, or would you want to stay MMA? See, I love, I got a, I love boxing. I grew up a boxing fan, like I said, and I love MMA too. But uh, I rather go MMA. It's so many other elements to MMA than boxing. You know. Boxing is a one-dimensional, you know, sport, a combat, True. combative sport, you know? True. True. You know? MMA, you know, you can submit, you know, you can outstrike, you know, kick. It's it's a lot of more things you can do, and that's why I like mixed martial arts above boxing, you know? So you love to brawl. Don't, I'm, you know, I'm not just a brawler that that's that's what some people get confused okay, you know okay. when they're fighters they see mma and they might say it's human cock fighting but it's techniques it's movements you know what i'm saying like holly beat ronda she meet, beat her with movement with you know straight, with attacking straight, that angles movement, you yeah. know so it's just all about what kind of fighter you are you know but i i but with me it depends on the opponent that i'm facing and you know what kind of fighter i become yeah i like the brawl here and there but I like to be, you know, smooth and flashy when I'm able to. You know, if I got to take them down, I got to take them down. If I got to submit them, I got to submit them. That's now, way. you said it just then, you like being flashy because, like anything, you have to promote yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what is a brand that you're promoting for yourself doing the sport? Just right now, um, me being in this sport, just I'm a tough guy. But I'm also a smart guy that can articulate stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know... We kind of get this concept, especially when people hear that I'm from Inglewood, mm -hmm. they, feel, they feel like I'm going to be ignorant, can't articulate myself, or mm -hmm. certain manner, this and that. Like, you know, I'm basically a hardworking guy. That's what I promote myself. I'm a hardworking guy. I walk around at 200 pounds. I cut down to 170 to fight, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just hard work, man. man and we just was talking in the back about cutting down the weight. Like, y'all don't know. 
It's some serious money going on here. That's one of the biggest parts of MMA, cutting down the weight. I got a question for you. So how does someone become a professional fighter? Like um, if if I was just wanted to get into it, well, not me. I ain't, got, I ain't that tough. To <laughs> come on, but if somebody wanted to, you know, get into to into MMA, how do they come from, how do they move up in the ranks and get to the different sponsorships and even the fight club? Well, right now I'm going through that right now with sponsorships, you know, and trying to, you know, move up. Um, I've been fighting amateur, so I'm ready to go pro. But it's the information is out there, you know. Information is out there, you know. Look on the computer, you know, find a certain gym. Start with finding a gym, you know. You got to find a gym. Make sure that gym is the right fit for you, you know. Certain people, uh, me starting off trying to get into MMA, I went to certain gyms and I was paying this money and, Basically, it just had me hitting the bag, and I wasn't learning nothing. So I had to get into a particular gym when I learned how to start striking and start learning um, some moves. It's just finding the right gym. Start off finding the right gym, booking your first fight with amateur, and then you know building your fan base. That's it. You always need a fan base with whatever you do, you know. So it's about being known, building your fan base, and finding the right gym that's the right fit for you. All right, now here's another question for you. What is your preferred style of fighting? My preferred style, I, I, you know, I started off, like I said, I started off a wrestler, you know, so I still right. love the slams, mm -hmm. you know, slam my strength, but I fell in love with the striking. I love striking. I love doing head kicks. And okay. knees, head kicks, I love it. So Muay Thai would be your preference? Yeah, Muay Thai. Okay. Because nice. you do kickboxing as well. You're trying to get your next fight. With a kickboxer, correct? Yes, that's correct. So, when is your next fight? It all depends on the promoter, what promotion. You know, we in conversation with them now. Negotiations. Them negotiations always take a lot of time. But there's nothing wrong with it because at the end, you're a gladiator of the sport and you're putting life and limb at risk. Yes, so, that sir. money got to be right. You know, yeah, I wouldn't correct. go in there for nothing less. Real talk, you know your worth. Now, we're going to go from the MMA side a little bit because what they also don't know. They don't know. Man, man, mm -hmm. got serious bars. Like, you mm -hmm. did your own ring music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, How that's dope big is that? Too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. man, tell us Come a little in and bit. get hyped up off my own music. <laughs> <laughs> Being the artist, I, I know that's that's the uh, dopest thing ever when you create music that you love. So. so, which is your longer passion, music? Or MMA fighting? See, I get this question all the time. Which one, um, if I could choose, music or fighting? And I just explain to people, man, it's like, you know, somebody asking you to choose between your two kids, which one you love more. <laughs> okay. You all know? Right. Okay. No, I got a passion for both, man. If I'm able to do both, that's the effort I put in it. When it comes down okay. to the, the point that I can't do MMA and I, all I got to do is focus on music, and then that's what I got to do. But right now, it's both, you know. I heard that. Don't let nobody put you in the box, man. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Let's talk about that video hazmat you got on YouTube right now. Dope. Man, definitely dope. I, I, I support it 100%. And it's 100% quality, too. And who did the track, and who did you rap with on it? Well, you know, hazmat, um, you know, who shot the video is Young Blaze, you know, a dope artist. He got an album out right now, Memories for the Future. You know, y'all need to check that out. It's a dope, it's a dope record. Um, but, you know, I did some work with Blaze before. And I told him that after he shot my first video, like, I don't want nobody else shoot my video but you, you know, because he's dope with the graphics. You know, I, we shot the video. I got it back within a week. And, you know, <laughs> that's big that, that too. turnaround, that's huge. it, 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 that's it was big. dope. But man, a lot of artists, man, like, you know, especially working with him, I paid out of pocket, man. I work a regular gig, you know, I work right, a regular right. gig yeah, with right. the fighting. And I know dudes that say they into this business, and this music business, they're scared to invest in themselves. You, how do you expect somebody else to invest in you if, you know, you don't invest in yourself? So, you know, I took a paycheck, you know, I, me and my people got together. I took the bulk of my paycheck, man. Had money to get the word for the week and bought, paid for my video, man. And the video my is man. dope. dope. My you man. know, on side artists. But, like, who's on the record is Giuliani Kennedy, you know. He's a dope artist. Yes, sir. Rello the Youngin, 
you know, mm-hmm. y'all need to check these names out because they dope artists. And it was produced by, you know, my Shabar Prospect Clark, you know, wh- who's part of my team, part of my uh, record label, co-owner uh, Leap. And, you know, it was mixed and um, uh, recorded and mixed by another uh, co-CEO uh, of the label, uh, Deron Mixer. Be clinic, you know, so but it's just a dope record in total, man. When you know, when soon I heard the record, I was like, Oh man, I had this rhyme in my head, you know, and I right. had to just get it out, you know. Hey, Shot Town, Southside, yeah, Inglewood, you get know, it, get it to him, yeah. <laughs> real talk, mm-hmm. Mike. Hey, I'm in, we're gonna yeah. be playing some of the music soon, man. Oh, you yeah, know, what I'm saying right here, we got some coming on in the show, we're gonna definitely hit you with the uh, yep. ring, ring, ring music so you can see it for yourself, yes, yes. Man, so when you write, what do you write to? Because I see my man Johnny Make Cash. What up, Johnny? Mm-hmm. I did the same thing with him. I asked him the same question. When you write, do you prefer to listen to the beat and write to it? Or do you already have something written before you get to the beat? Yo, it's that's that's a dope question. It all depends on, you know, it all depends on the situation. If I have a beat at the time, it's some records that I just thought of and had a beat created for. But mm-hmm. it's some of them records, like I wrote a record called Mental Instrumental, you know, and I said I was going to write the record, no cursing, a lot of wordplay, and a crazy hook. But Mental Instrumental is about my writing process. Sometimes I might hear a beat on the radio or just hear a beat and it gets stuck in my head. And I walk around the whole time just rapping to it. Like people be looking at me like I'm talking to myself. And that's the process. If I have a beat and I might turn it on, I might freestyle with it. And if I spit a certain line in that freestyle uh, while I'm freestyling to the beat and it's sticking in my head, I'm going to write that down. And I'm gonna, and I'm like, yo, this this going to be the, you know, this is what I'm working with right mm-hmm. here. So, you know, Mental Instrumental came, you know, the title and everything came. I heard the beat. Was jazzy beat and I had a line in there said people think I'm crazy because I walk around spitting to a mental instrumental and I'm like oh yeah I likes that I wrote it <laughs> it's <Yeah>. dope <laughs> see now we gotta get you to spit some bars for you. <laughs> <laughs> we mixing it up man so because you're a fighter how do you find balance like as a fighter as an artist and you say you work like where where what do you want? How do you sleep? And where do you find your balance? Like <laughs> with all those titles, because I know I work and I DJ, right. and I got so much going on. Like you I never sleep. never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, sleep is overrated, man. What, what, That's true. Once you know, once you get used to a certain schedule, you know, you just used to it. People be looking at me like I'm crazy. Like the other day, I had to rip and run, and I had training, and I had to go to training. I was up for like 24 hours because I had to go to work right after training. Mm-hmm. But it's just like. You know, you, you you set a schedule and you just get set in that schedule. Like I spend time with my kids. I got three beautiful kids, man. And sometimes they my kids at the gym with me. You know, while okay, I'm training, nice. they playing yeah, around, nice. they getting that quality time in. So, you know, it's just you know setting up your schedule. You know, do you so mentor? Yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. yeah, Escobar asked, do you mentor? Yeah, you know, like I said, growing up in Goodwood, man, I'm. I was an OG by the time I hit 21. So, you know, if yeah. you know, the kids respect me, man. They come to me, man, they ask me questions. And, yeah, I mentor them, man. You know, if they if they have a question for me, and that's the problem, man. A lot of people are scared to talk to the kids now. They're they yeah. scared, yes. you know. Yes. And you got to just look at it like, you know, you, you – how are you scared of the kids, man? Talk to them, man. Be an OG, man. They can't get their heads right, especially if you run around and get your head right. So, right. you know, right. talk right. to them, try to mentor like like – I, I tried my best. I tried to set up mental programs, but, you know, my time is kind of crazy right it's now, so, you know. Yeah. But, like, if anybody, if any kid, like, got questions for me about anything about, about what I do, I'm here. You know, if they want to come to the gym and check it out, I, I, I give them a free pass to come to the gym. All right, and that's what that leads right up to what I want to say. Man, reach you give them your info, man, mm-hmm. how they can reach you. Give them your social media. Uh, You can reach me at Vo, um. On Instagram, it's just Vo Emphasis, one word, V O E M P H A S I S. On Facebook, Vo, um, well, Stephen Vo Emphasis Winston, you know, and Twitter at Vo Emphasis, you know. Nice. And I wanted to also let y'all know um, I'm a 2016 honoree for um, We Dream and Live in Color, and it's just basically about bringing the awareness of. Um, 
size and the one ribbon awareness colors and one ribbon because I'm a diabetic. I've been diabetic oh. since I was 11. Hey, okay, you know, right. so I'm type diabetic, brother. Me too. You know, Congratulations, bro. You know, thank you. Know, thank you know, so you know, and I'm just you know try to I try to stay in shape and stay healthy. So it was an honor to be an honoree, you know, That's and just big. you know. That's big. It's definitely dope. Oh, yeah, yeah man. man. Thank you. I'm a diabetic myself, so okay. I definitely can use some uh, pointers on stuff because I be lacking. Like, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, man. If you want to eat what you want to eat and do all the time. I mean, that's another story. But, man, I'm glad you came through. Definitely, brother. Appreciate Thank you, bro. You, bro. Man, it's nothing Thank but you, love. You welcome. More emphasis, man. Anytime. More emphasis, man. Y'all definitely. Man, y'all, 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 y'all cool, man. All the whole staff, man. Y'all cool people, man. We had some jokes in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Kept laughing, but yo, definitely, I definitely gotta come back on. Yeah, I mean, uh, anytime you welcome, man, you can come to Sports World. And as soon as you get your next fight, you can come up on here, man, and let us know so we can go and yes, support please. you, man, hundred percent. Mm-hmm. MH to the Dawes Lotto, Russ? Rusty Blade, man. I enjoyed it once again. It's been a Sports World. You know, we run our mouth here, man. I mean, that's what we do. I know y'all be tripping, (laughs) but it is what it is. This is like barbershop talk. Basically, I'm just going to be honest. If you want to hear stats and you got all this, go watch Mike and Mike. Yeah, you can go to them guys. You can go to them guys. I mean, because we (laughs) over here, we not conventional, but we got knowledge about ourselves, and we going to bring through a host of good special people, man, and and, and just vibe with y'all, man. Rich Radio, 107 The Beat. Digital Dope, Logic, Windy City, Underground, every day, all day, man. Thanks for the love. Sports Radio, we out.